Stop! We've actually overshot what you need to know to discuss protection rings. So, protection rings are the interactions between the requested privilege level, the thing that you saw inside of segment selectors, descriptor privilege level, the thing that you saw inside of segment descriptors, and introducing the current privilege level. The CPL is defined as the protection level of the currently executing code segment. So basically, it is just the bits 0 and 1 of the segment selector for whatever segment selector is currently in the code segment register. So when it comes to privilege enforcement, the rings are actually hardware enforced, as we said at the very, very beginning. And the hardware is going to enforce it when particular things are happening, such as instruction fetches, meaning code execution, and data fetches, meaning just reading and writing data. So if, for instance, you were trying to do control flow transition from one segment to a different segment via the typical control flow instructions like jump, conditional jumps, call, return, the hardware is going to automatically check for the target segment is the DPL greater than or equal to the CPL. So the current privilege level, which is whatever is in the bottom two bits of the code segment register, is that value less than or equal to the target DPL, right? So if you're in ring three, is the place that you're going have a value that is greater than or equal to three? If it's zero, well, zero is not greater than or equal to three, so it wouldn't allow a transition from ring zero to ring three, unless, for instance, it was those conforming segments. Sorry, from ring three to ring zero, unless it was a conforming segment. Another place that the hardware enforces it is privileged instructions. So you can see this location in the manual where there's a big old list of privileged instructions, but we've already seen some examples, things like loading the GDT register and loading the LDT register are things where we indicate with a red star that those can only be done from CPL zero, and that's just hard coded into the way that the processor executes. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, if CPL is just the lower two bits of CS, I'll just go ahead and write those two bits to zero and I will be in ring zero. And of course, Intel says, yeah, right, that's not going to happen. They say both that the move instruction cannot be used to load the CS register, otherwise it'll cause an invalid opcode exception. And there's no way to load up the CS register via pop because there literally is no pop CS, though there is a pop SS, DS, etc. So how do you set the CS to become ring zero? Well, that's a little bit of a mystery for now. We'll see one answer to that mystery in the next section, but uh, there's many different possible ways to answer that question. So the conclusion for privilege rings is that ultimately it's the kernel's responsibility to set up user space before it transitions from ring zero to ring three. That's to set up user space in such a way that it's going to have a code segment register where the segment selector has an RPL of three, and that'll mean that your CPL will be three, and that whatever selector is being used should be selecting a descriptor which has a DPL of three as well. And so again, like I just said, the segment selector RPL of three will mean that it has a CPL, current privilege level of three. By doing this, the kernel will effectively have created code that's running in ring three, aka user space, aka user mode. Likewise, it's the kernel's responsibility to make sure that when it sets up its own kernel space so that when it exits out down to user space, the less privileged area, that it still has a way to get back, a way to transition back to kernel space, and that within kernel space, the CS register has a segment selector with an RPL of zero, points at a segment descriptor with a DPL of zero. And in so doing, CPL equals zero when the code is running. And that's why we say that kernel space code runs in ring zero, we can call it kernel space, we can call it ring, we'll call it kernel mode, but ultimately what it comes down to is that certain bits are set to zero to indicate that it has the most privilege and permission, it can execute the most, every single assembly instruction on the system, and so forth. So there's all sorts of little corner cases and weird little things about how all the privilege checks go, so if you really want to know the super details, then you can RTFM Volume 3, Section 5.5, where it talks about every little detail that there is. And with that, Sonic has successfully completed his journey trying to find how privilege rings work and collecting this amazing giant ring.